downtown Milwaukee Wisconsin and inside the Bradley Center about 18,000 maybe a little more than 18,000 for our game today Marquette and Cincinnati as the Marquette lineup is introduced let's take a look at the starters for the game today for Cincinnati the Conference USA player of the year returned and Steve Logan and he's their leading scorer and he's done a tremendous job for the Bearcats leading him to this 20 game win streak and ought to be a key in today's ball game. but if Cordell Henry can get that little floater going from right of the lane like he did last week against St. Louis he'll be a big help today for Marquette yeah Cordell Henry the, the senior from Marquette has really gotten it done from the three point line and from those floaters that you mentioned John the Marquette Golden Eagles lost their first conference game at Charlotte and have won a school record seven in a row in Conference USA while Cincinnati lost its very first game back in November against Oklahoma State and the Bearcats have reeled off 20 consecutive victories and Stephen they're the first team in the country to reach 20 wins and you, it's not a surprise because of the way that they play what their coach expects of them and then they have a superstar in Steve Logan they do play defense they being Cincinnati and Marquette it is just a rule in those two programs as Cincinnati with a 20 game winning streak coming off a 75 48 win over East Carolina held the Pirates to 36.5 percent shooting from the field and Marquette has been holding opponents under 40 percent from field goal range while holding them to about 32 percent. Tom Crean is the head coach of the Marquette Golden Eagles his third year here 48 victories. He was an assistant for 10 years before the Marquette job working Michigan State a couple of times Western Kentucky and at Pittsburgh. The Cincinnati Bearcats are huddled around their coach right in the middle of the huddle is Bob Huggins. Huggins his 13th year at Cincinnati 321 victories. And he has had a sensational run. This is an interesting place. Bradley Center, the home of the Milwaukee Bucks, and there's been a great home, Al McGuire Court here for Marquette. And this is what Cordell Henry had to say about playing in this building, about the honor. And you become excited. And when you get into an atmosphere like this is today, Stephen, you said it best. You said you, you got caught up in it, and you'd like to have the jersey on out there playing. Yeah, I got sweaty palms right now and really want to get after it like these guys right here. And the series history you see as the game is underway and Cordell Henry tried to run it down and it's out of bounds. Will we do it again? We shall. Tom O'Neill, Sam Croft and Rick Hartzell are the officials assigned by Conference USA. We hope you enjoy it. 20 minutes up on the board. Merritt and Little jumping center and it's Marquette's basketball. Aluma Namaka, and you feel he has to have a big game today, Namaka. Yeah, Namaka has played well in the last couple seasons against Cincinnati, and uh, assistant coach Stevens said he is the key to their club this afternoon. He Logan, has to on, play big. Logan on Henry, and there's 23. McElroy guarding Wade. Aluma Namaka is watched by Jamal Davis. Well, look at this defense. Starting out already from Cincinnati. 13 on the shot clock. Wade just throws one off the glass. And there's McElroy, who did such a good job defending him, giving Cincinnati a possession. Wade is going to have to be patient because this is something that he hasn't seen in his college career, this type of defensive pressure. Little out to McElroy. He was open. Stokes now. 15 on the shot clock. And you, you notice McElroy. And a line drive rebound to Cordell Henry. You were saying, Stephen? Mar Marquette does a wonderful job of playing each player to their skill set, leaving McElroy to shoot the open jumper, but playing close to Logan. And here's Henry penetrating. He was looking for that runner, but he saw Donald Little standing there. Little comes up with the turnover. Watch Logan. He's very crafty off the dribble, coming down in the broken set. Merritt came out to assist. McElroy checked by Namath. Foul called into the free throw line, Leonard Stokes, a junior from Buffalo, New York. Here we go at the defensive end. Watch it. McElroy get all over Wade. Didn't give up once he was screened. Came back in and got help from his teammate and forced a tough shot for Wade. You know what? We're talking about McElroy, the good defensive job he's doing. But there's Donald Little, all 6'11", in the middle. He has interrupted a couple of sets for Marquette already in our game today. Leonard Stokes out of Buffalo. He missed his first shot from the free throw line Cincinnati is hitting a respectable 71 percent as a team which is much better than their their usually done in, in years past and this guy at the line Stokes 
we saw really lit up the Paul early in the year, so he has the ability to have a big game offensively. One nothing Cincinnati. Marquette has had a couple of trips down the floor. Here's Wade trying to shake McElroy. And Stokes cleans the glass. Well, he's going to have to knock that down. That's about as good a look as he's going to get all afternoon. How quickly does Logan shoot the ball? That goes for two, but it, it took him only a blink of an eye to get the shot away. At six feet, he has to have that quick release, and he got it off that time. Here's Henry with that floater right of the lane, and he caused some problems for Cincinnati. And Cordell will go to the free throw line. Let's see how Logan goes in and kind of lulls Henry to sleep and gets that quick release Jay off right in his mug. And then Henry went to the other end, and Logan committed a foul as Henry got away to the right side of the lane. Henry is on the scoreboard. This is going to be a special duel between these two talented point guards from Marquette and Henry and Logan from Cincinnati. And Wade and McElroy, some good matchups to follow, but don't forget about the big men inside. Little in particular. As Henry scores a couple of points, one point eight for Cincinnati, and Marquette applying full court pressure. McElroy out of the double team, back to the middle of the floor to last year's Conference USA Player of the Year, Steve Logan. Well, Logan is confident with that basketball. And he can pass it. McElroy couldn't get the roll, and Odarte Blankson Averages 6.2 rebounds a game. Gives the ball back to the Golden Eagles. Darte will be big in this ball game, not necessarily from scoring, but from a toughness aspect. What has happened to Scott Merritt? Merritt right there committed the turnover. He has started the last 10 games, and after scoring 10 points against UAB January 15th, has totaled nine points over the last four games. Scott is, is a typical example of a player that has lost his confidence in his ability. So he's thinking instead of playing natural. Logan drawing a double team. And that left Jamal Davis open. But Logan's going to create something on Henry. who hit the deck. No foul call. McElroy shooting. And he scores two. That's a good sign for Cincinnati. If they can get the open shots to go down from McElroy. Because Wade is going to have to help Henry guarding Logan. Cordell Henry, number four, directing traffic. Wayne Wade with the pull-up. Oh, boy. Nice weak side to strong side cut by Wade and then nice pull up off the dribble. Textbook jump shot releasing the shot at the top of his jump. Now Cincinnati with a one point lead in the ball. Little from the high post. McElroy inside for Davis. See how Marquette's defense sinks in and encourages the outside jumper by Cincinnati. Stokes in the line drive rebound for Dwayne Wade. He's dangerous in the open floor. Wade will bring it back out. He'll let Cordell Henry set it up. Henry, the senior from Whitney Young High School in Chicago. You know, for Cincinnati, they have to really be patient defensively. Wade hits another one. That goes for two. He has scored the last two trips down the floor. Marquette has a one point lead. And this is what Marquette needs to do against the number four team in the country. Come in here and get the crowd involved early. And two shots like that will get the job done. Logan working on Cordell Henry. A little short and little pushes off. Donald Little with his first foul. And we've reached our first time out of the day. Under 16 minutes to go in the first half. Wade working on McElroy, and there's that pull-up we talked about. And then the very next time down the floor, Wade scored his second field goal of the day. The action is good. More to come from Milwaukee after this. Logan leading the league in scoring at 21.8. Little's the leading rebounder. And Logan has 5.3 assists. He's not selfish with the basketball, but he knows a shot when he sees it. He knows a shot when he sees it, but he's a, the total player in that he's very unselfish when he has the opportunity to be, but aggressive enough offensively to help his teammates out. Marquette two for four from the field. Wade has hit both of those. Nice bounce to Merritt, who was contested inside by Davis. A basket and one for Odarte Blankson. He scores his first field goal and was fouled. Odarte Blankson, the warrior, 
out of Hillcrest, Illinois, gets underneath and goes after the ball. That's the type of intensity you need to display against these Bearcats. Nice job by Odarte Blankson. Both coaches said rebounding will be a factor in the game today, and we've talked about the defensive efforts. But Blankson nails a three-point basket. Last year in the two wins by Marquette, John, they had 35 offensive rebounds in both of those games, so that's a key in today's matchup. A 9-5 Marquette lead. Remember, Cincinnati is on a 20-game winning streak. McElroy passes up the shot to an open Jamal Davis, but a little off to the right. And there's Odarte Blankson. Blankson has established himself early. Cincinnati typically likes to bang you in the mouth and see if you'll respond, but I think Blankson has shown that early. Namika was open, had a little trouble gathering the basketball, but look at that spin move. Man. And what, he used the left hand. What creativity down low against the bigger little. Namika went with the left, as you said, John, and got it to go. Oh, the spin move by Logan. He split a double team. Little can't score, but what a, a move inside to create the opening for Donald Little. And here we have Henry Nice. Bounce pass that time, and Nabuka up fake. Spin back through with the left hand. Nabuka's played well against Cincinnati throughout his career here at Marquette. And we talked about at the open that it was very important for him to have a good game inside against these Bearcats. Langston put Little on the line, and Little a 57% free throw shooter. We'll have another attempt coming here with 14.33 to go in the first half. Number 10 is Travis Diener, freshman from Fond du Lac, Goodrich High School. Wade goes over to take a breather after a couple of tough battles against Cincinnati on the other end of the floor. This shot is in play for Little. He missed them both, and Blankson gets his second rebound. The other guy in the ball game for Cincinnati, Jason Maxiel, very special ball player for Cincinnati. Freshman, but they really expect him to be one of their best players. McElroy is watching Diener now, who's very effective, Diener, from the three-point line. Maxiel is an athlete. Namika, out of the weave, Diener. Seven on the shot clock. Boy, look at McElroy. He's on him like a cheap suit. Merritt lets it fly, and he's off the mark. Maxiel tears the rebound down. How about that? The strength. That's the freshman out of Texas. He's raw athletically, but boy, it gives you the effort. Almost like a savvy veteran. The Cincinnati working the ball on the outside. The fake for three, a shot for two. Blanks and rebounds again for Marquette. Little tried to take it away. I'll tell you what, Blankson has really solidified the interior. Look, look here, the help that time by Namaka. Henry was picked up by the, by the screen and roll. They double team Logan. Great help defensively by Namaka that time. McElroy with his first foul for Cincinnati, and here comes Marquette. Diener's open. That's a shot for three. Little inside. Picks the ball off the hardwoods. Boy, look at Steve Logan. Just McElroy straight. missed it, but how about that jam by Jason Maxiel? Jason Maxiel coming through with the hammer. He is an athlete. And just think, he's only... Hasn't had a full year of that conditioning program by the Bearcats. Namika got past Maxiel, but he was able to recover. Henry for three. And that's all glass. In the running game, Logan looking for McElroy. Oh, my goodness. A basket and one as McElroy goes to the line to attempt a three-point play. Hey, you see the jumper here, McElroy, and then Maxiel. Nobody box him out with the power follow. And then Logan with the nice shovel pass to a streaky McElroy for an easy layup and a possible three-point play. Henry's first foul, the third team foul on Marquette in the first half. Placing Emmanuel McElroy, a senior from Port Arthur, Texas, on the line. And that's short. Easy rebound in the lane for Odarte Blankson. 11-9 Marquette. We've had plenty of action in the first half as the clock ticks to 12 and a half minutes to go. 
You see John Harris in the ball game a little bit stronger, more veteran athlete against these Bearcat interior defenders. Trying to deny the inbounds pass. Uh, the ball was kicked, a new 35 second ball. Namika goes out along with Blankson. Wade, 18.5 points a game, is the leading scorer, the leading rebounder, the leading assist man. There he is. Oh, what touch. And like last week we said, he's a combination of old school and new jack. That time the nice up fake that we don't see that often in college basketball. And then the easy jump hook. Six so far for Wade, and on a reach in, Logan is fouled. Logan does such a good job protecting the ball, keeping it low to the court. Look at the field goals. And here we have a look at Wade sneaking in, up fake, gets a little off his feet, and it goes to the nice jump hook. That's the fundamentals of a savvy ball player, but Wade only in his first full year of college action. Here's Logan to Little at the high post. Number two field Williams is in, and Little takes the shot that rims out. Strong rebound for Wade, and he was fouled by Maxi. Oh, Looks like there's some disagreement, but you're right, John. First foul on Maxi. And we have a timeout with 11.57 left in the first half. The action will continue as you're watching Conference USA Basketball from ESPN+. Plus. A 13 to 9 lead over the number four team in the country, the Cincinnati Bearcats, in the first half. And now let's take a moment to thank our Conference USA corporate partner, Gatorade. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? These fans came ready today, didn't they? The student section to the left of your screen. All that gold over there. And for the Bearcats to come onto the court, they have to go through the tunnel in that sea of gold. You think that's by coincidence? Chance, maybe. <laughs> Only by design. That's it. Great Bob, Bob Huggins is still talking to the officials after the collision on the other end resulted in a Jason Maxwell foul. After the timeout, Marquette's ball with a 13 to 9 lead, 11.50 counting in the first half. Wade missed his first two shots. He has hit his last three. Diener, three point shot. He has missed two of those. Sanders tries to run down the rebound, can't find a handle on it, and Cincinnati gets the ball back. Even on that shot attempt, when the rebound went up, Marquette had three players in there battling for the offensive glass. Logan watched by Henry. The turnaround by Maxiel all net. <laughs> Jason Maxiel showing us a little bit of his package there on the nice turnaround. He has four points, averages 7.3 a game. Wade working on McElroy, trying to get a little help from Field Williams. Here's Wade and a foul call. No, goaltending. Goaltending the call. Score that basket for Wade and give him eight. Wade was fortunate, John, because he's coming down. You see him. He's trying to go through the whole team, and a slight defensive breakdown allows him to slip through and get the goaltend call. On the other end, Logan. Little can't pull the rebound in. Wade does. A four-point lead. Henry tries to make it six. Cornell Henry, Henry has four. Henry doing a great job of, of getting in the paint once again and getting the jumper, but he's posing problems for Logan. Logan's used to going against taller defenders. Henry just as quick as Logan. He can't shake him quite as easily. Barry Sanders was pushing Logan out the perimeter, and here's McElroy lobbing lower. Was that a shot? There's, there's some action inside and a foul on Little, his second. Yeah. See here, Henry. Getting inside the defense, getting the jump of the ball. He loves the right side of the lane, about that spot, anywhere from 8 to 12 feet out. And you know what? I, I know Cincinnati knows that. They try to make him go left. Heck of a lot easier scouting than getting it done on the floor. How did you make a player do what he didn't want to do? I had a lot of size, and so I was... Oh, Wade man. is fouled on the drive, and did you see the quick step on McElroy? Yeah. Just a... a a powerful step through you see here. He's got a shoulder square, and he's going for keeps. Not, not going to lay it up, John. He's going to put it down. McElroy's second foul. But as McElroy does, and as I try to do when I play, John, is 
to, to stand on a guy's right hand, meaning you get all over his right side and force him left. And if he beats you left, then he beats you left. You can follow all 14 Conference USA teams on the league's official website, www.cusasports.com. The site contains up-to-date notes, stats, box scores, as well as information on the league's other 18 sports. So tune in to the latest news across the conference by pointing your browser to www.c-usasports.com. 18-11 Marquette. Maxiel from a double team finds Stokes open. Sanders guards him. And it was also contested up front by DeWade, allowing Terry Sanders a shot at the rebound. Diener for three. Count it. Oh, man. Marquette's trying to bust this thing wide open early. A 10-point lead after the three ball by number 10, Travis Diener. Nice job. The Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Marquette fans are going crazy. We have 9.55 to go. First half, the fourth-ranked Cincinnati Bearcats on a 20-game winning streak against 7-1 Marquette in Conference USA play 18-3 overall. McElroy and Wade are the leading scorers. Wade has nine. They hit four shots in a row. An 8-0 run for Marquette over the last two minutes and 24 seconds, and Travis nails this three ball. Really good recognition coming down the floor. No one picked him up. He's feeling the, the momentum of his team in the crowd, and he nails the three-pointer. Puts him up by 10. From the field, 5 for 16 for Cincinnati. Marquette has made three more field goals. Eight out of 16. Nice adjustment this time by Huggins. He puts Logan off the ball and on the wing to try to ease him from the ball handling responsibility. Maxiel scores the basket, and he'll be on the free throw line. Now we got to check, uh, check Jason Maxiel's knuckles. The boys aren't so long. Look like they're dragging the ground. This kid is, is a physical specimen. See here, the last time he turned over his left shoulder, this time he goes over his right shoulder, gets the foul, and gets the jumper to go. Harris fouled him, and it's a three point play. Maxiel has seven points. Wade out. Right now, John Harris, Cordell Henry, Travis Diener in the lineup with Terry Sanders and Odarte Blankson for Marquette. That foul on Wade is really going to hurt Marquette offensively because he was really rolling here early. And Wade has two fouls now. Henry at the point. Henry found the opening. There's that floater that doesn't fall in. No basket. A foul inside. An offensive foul. Cincinnati will get the ball. Sanders with his second foul gives the ball back to the Bearcats. If I'm Cincinnati, right now with Wade out of the ball game, I try to help Henry because he is really the only one that can go off the dribble and get his own shot. 21-14 Marquette. Harris tried to deny the pass to Jason Maxiel. And there is John Harris's first foul. Boy, Jason Maxfield hasn't been affected by the early start this afternoon. Has come off the bench and made an immediate impact for the Bearcats. Let me correct that. Two fouls on John Harris. Maxfield to the free throw line where he connected on a three-point play a moment ago. Big deep breath for the 6'7 freshman from Carrollton, Texas. Nice position inside for Scott Merritt. 21 14 Marquette. Marquette now, since they don't have the first look coming down, they'll pull it back out and eat up some of the clock. Very patient offensively. Merritt looking inside. A lot of banging going on inside. Langston, but he rolls into Rodney Crawford. Well, Darte Langston with his second foul. That's the eighth team foul, being an offensive foul. Cincinnati has the possession. Crawford did a very good job of bodying Blankson early, getting him out of position. 
and then being there to draw the charge. Off the behind the back dribble, Logan Crawford at the point. Will Williams, Logan, working the outside. That's Jamal Davis. Aaron is with Davis. 13 on the shot clock. That's a three that goes for Field Williams, and he shoots 45% behind the arc. Field Williams has come on the last four games at 13.5. It's an offense off the bench. 21-17 Marquette, and the building is a little quieter than it was about 10 minutes ago. And with all the mix-up, Merritt and Maxiel inside. Scott Merritt picks up a foul. Or excuse me, Maxiel's second foul, fouling Merritt. Maxiel getting a little over-anxious that time. When you, you, you have to remember when you're playing, you're playing hard, but you have to play smart, John. Merritt is not going to beat you 8 to 10 feet away from the basket. He's got to be point blank to be effective. So he's got to be smarter than that defensively. Scott Merritt started the last 10 games. He didn't start, or didn't score, that is, and he started against DePaul on the road. One point with five rebounds against Tulane on Tuesday. And that spins off. Cincinnati on the attack, and a blocking foul called against Marquette. Logan trying to put a move on Cordell Henry. That's the second foul on Henry. And the fouls are pil piling up on each side. You see Logan going with his left. Henry trying to draw a charge. I like that call. Wasn't popular with the home crowd, but I do like that call. Got to give Logan an opportunity to work offensively. Logan on the line. Two out of seven for the free throw line of the Bearcats. Logan has scored three points. Now I'm told that, that Henry has one personal foul. Oh, I think we had the fouls adjusted. So they made a change when Dwayne Wade picked up his second foul. Rebound, Odarte Blanchard. Steve Logan, the leading scorer in the league, has scored three points in the first half. Cincinnati is two for eight from the free throw line as a team. And despite all of that, they're only down three, John. So they're in really good position here in the first half, especially with Wade being on the bench with two fouls. Logan fouls Diener. Second foul on Logan. And that causes a reaction with Teron Barker, 6'1 junior from Racine, Wisconsin, a very strong guard. The bench press in excess of 350 pounds, we're told. That's amazing. <laughs> Being that strong, we see Logan not happy with that call. Diener with the free throw. There's another one coming. It's 7.30 left in the first half. Diener scored a three-point basket and a foul shot. When you come into matchups like this, as we see Diener hit the second one, guys get a little anxious and they foul early. A timeout on the court. Bradley Center in Milwaukee. And there's Cordell Henry. You talk about thinking. This is a thinking man's game today in Milwaukee. We'll be right back. It's cold outside. Uh, with that coat, though, I'm, I'm sure he's warm. And inside, it's hot. It is hot in the Bradley Center. A 20-game winning streak on the line for Cincinnati. And let's take a look at our Conference USA standings. Cincinnati is 20 and, and one overall, 8 and 0 in the league. Marquette, Charlotte with seven victories, followed by Louisville, St. Louis, DePaul, and East Carolina. In the National Division, Memphis is undefeated. For John Calipari, 18 and four overall. Houston, South Florida with four victories. UAB, Tulane at three. Southern Miss with two, and TCU with one. And on tap today in Conference USA, TCU and Memphis, Southern Miss playing at Tulane. Down there at Super Bowl weekend, St. Louis, East Carolina get together tonight with Charlotte playing in Houston. 8 o'clock Eastern time for that tip-off. Cincinnati with the ball, and Cincinnati will host the Conference USA Tournament. Two teams in the league will not make the league tournament based on Conference USA regular season records. Davis, travel. Boy. Merritt has played a pretty good defensive first half for Marquette. 
Yes, he did. He stood tall that time, held his ground, forcing Davis to, to uh, move his feet. Cincinnati's first turnover, Marquette has three in the first half. Kept the mistakes down. Namaka, not about taking the shot or creating something. Merrick moving in, shooting over B.J. Grove, but there is Crawford, Rodney Crawford. That was a good shot by Merrick that time. John Harris over on the bench, getting some attention, perhaps poked in the eye. Meanwhile, on the floor, Grove. And he walked with the ball. The fans wanted the travel call and got it. Grove looked like Merritt hit the ball of his hands early. He got it back and wanted to go back at Merritt. Just lost his balance. The second Cincinnati turnover. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Marquette holding on to a 23-18 lead, looking to add to it. Henry for three. And from the short shot, B.J. Grove cleans the glass for Cincinnati. A smart of Barker to push it up and try to create some offense early. Oh, Williams had it rattle out, and a foul call against Scott Merritt. First foul on Scott Merritt. This is what is so good about the Bearcats, that they can go deep into their bench. They don't have Logan. They don't have McElroy. And, and they don't have Stokes in the ball game. They have three different front court players, back court players, excuse me, and they're still in the game here with Marquette. With well, 10 team fouls, Cincinnati shoots two the rest of the first half. Jamal Davis has another free throw coming. A high School All-American at Merrillville High School in Indiana. Went on to Barton County, Kansas Community College. Was third team All-American. Number one, Jamal Davis. Cordell Henry over on the Marquette bench. You saw him a moment ago. Jamal Davis is able to cut into the Marquette lead, making it a three-point game. And now we see Diener slide back to the point guard position. He's guarded by Teron Barker. Namika all the way in. Over the rim it goes to B.J. Grove. Namika made a nice move to the basket, but Grove, Grove and, and Little made a nice play. Next week, Conference USA Basketball. Bobby Lutz's Charlotte 49ers playing against the St. Louis Billikens at the Sabbath Center. That's one Eastern Time, noon Central. Conference USA Basketball plan on joining us next week. DJ Grove to the line. Nice arc, nice rotation. Sweet stroke by the big fellow. And he's shooting into the student section in the background here at the Bradley Center. And the second shot rolls in. Now it's a one point game from 10 points down to one. These Bearcats living up to their reputation, scrapping, making it happen. Foul off the ball as David Diggs hit the deck. B.J. Grove, his first foul. Number 10 in the team foul column for Cincinnati. Two shots the rest of the half for the Marquette Golden Eagles. David Diggs, a senior from Dayton, Ohio. 67% from the line, perfect there. That time Diggs tried to set a cross screen on Grove. And Grove goes 280. He's listed at 280. He might be 300. And uh, BJ didn't feel like moving around that time, so he went through his chest. Two free throws for David Diggs. The fans make a little more noise now as we come down to five and a half minutes left in the first half in Milwaukee. Number 20 is Teron Barker. And that's broken up. There's a deflection that Tom Crean likes. Nice play by Blankson to give the Golden Eagles the basketball. And Diggs on the wing. Tom Crean preaches, get a hand, deflect the ball, either tip the, the shot or tip the pass. They like 35 to 40 deflections a game. They feel if they can get their hands on the ball that many, get some steals, they'll be successful. Blankson, offensive foul. B.J. Grove, uh, I think he helped sell that call. Yes, he did. That's three fouls on Blankson. Same thing on the other side earlier. Blankson trying to create space. He dips that shoulder into Crawford and picks up the offensive foul. 
Cincinnati's ball from the backcourt with 507 left until halftime. Langston, three points and seven rebounds. He has three fouls. That's gonna hurt. He's been very solid. As you just said underneath the glass. Well, Namika and Davis mixing it up. No whistle out front. And that's that's what it's all about, though. They're not being malicious. It's just hard battling out here. Jamal Davis with the one hand. Give <laughs> him four in the first half, Stephen. Boy, we got a special one here, John. These guys aren't giving an inch either way. One point lead for Marquette. Diener, the freshman, moving in, and there was some movement defensively with the foul on number 30, Rodney Crawford, his first. Let's look at the physical play here. Davis out front with Navica. Oh. Try, tries to throw an elbow to get it, creates his space. It's a good thing he didn't connect with that one. Oh, it, was, it wouldn't have hurt Navica, though. It was right in the shift. It wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have hurt him, but the official may have had something to say about it. Yeah, but as a player, John, if the officials don't get the opposing player off of you, it's your job to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what Davis is doing. He's trying to create space. He has to operate out there. But it's all in how the official interprets it. That's true. The second free throw is good. Bill Russell, the Celtics from 57 to 69. He can play some defense. <laughs> Lots of defense. I'd say so. He probably could get out here right now and play some defense as great as he was. Cincinnati's Davis for Barker, who shoots a three attempt. Teron oh, yeah. Barker's first field goal is a trade. This team has a collective mindset that they will not give an inch. They will not lose whoever's on the ball floor and, and on the court. And they're putting it together right now here in the first half despite some serious foul trouble by some of their starters. Three-point field goal shooting. Cincinnati two out of four. And Marquette one for five. And that was Diener with the three years. Henry. He let all the traffic clear. And Henry has scored six points in the first half, putting Marquette back in front. As Cincinnati had erased a 10-point deficit. Cordell Henry's got to be in the top three in the country of point guards and getting into the paint and getting that jumper to go in that float. Here's Davis stepping up. Field Williams finds scores. 15 on the shot clock, 317 and counting in the first half. And the fans applaud Marquette's D. Long shot by Barker, and it's off the mark this time. Black jerseys go around the basketball with Davis. Grove banging all the way in, and Davis was undercut by Diener. Looked like Diener caught an elbow on the way down. Diener is in pain, slow to get up. Travis Diener's first foul, and he paid for that one. Oh, his uh looked like he was trying to box out Davis. Davis had his full weight on his back. And here's the play. You see here, Grove going up for the shot. Davis going for the rebound. You see 235 pounds on Dieter's back. That's why he's grimacing. The fans boo as Jamal Davis rims the free throw. No good. I'll tell you what. There's Diener bent over at the waist. As I said, he paid for that foul. Yes, he did. He's trying to gut it out, but he's in some pain. He's lucky he wasn't Grove <laughs> as opposed to David. Grove Davis. out. Rod Flowers is in for Cincinnati. A miss, and there's Diener in the lane with the rebound. And a little slow coming up the floor, but getting to the front court nonetheless. And Diener's going to come out of the lineup. Number three, Dwayne Wade will be in for Marquette. And a timeout in the Bradley Center in Milwaukee with 2.52 left in the first half. The Marquette Golden Eagles lead by two, 29 to 27. Cordell Henry has scored six in the first half. Watch his work as you're watching Conference USA Basketball from ESPN+. but leads by two. 2.52 to go until halftime. And coming up on the American Century Halftime Report, 
of Conference USA news and notes. And our player feature this week highlights the Bearcats, Steve Logan. And we'll go over the highlights and the stats from the first half. That's all coming up on the American Century Halftime Report. For Stephen Bardo, I'm John Rooney at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, where we have had a very entertaining first half with Marquette jumping out to a 10-point lead in one point. Cincinnati coming back to tie it up. Some foul troubles. Logan, um, McElroy, Donald Little, Jason Maxiel, all the two for Cincinnati. And Odarte Blankson has three. Dwayne Wade, two. Cordell Henry, two fouls for Marquette. Marquette's ball after the timeout. Merritt from the double team finding Henry. And Henry really hounded. Boy, that was a nice job of Merritt passing out of that double team. Looked like he was going to get into trouble. Henry got past Barker and scores. Eight points for Cordell. He averages 14 a game. The little big man coming up big this afternoon in the first half of Marquette. 31 27, Golden Eagles. If there are young players watching, young aspiring players, watch Cordell Henry play the game. Has a lot of quickness, but does a lot of smart things on the floor and uses his attributes to the best of his ability. Ten on the shot clock now. Diggs is watching Barker. Barker floats one up. That's short. Flowers rebounds, and he hits the deck. It's a held ball. And the possession, Arrow is favoring Cincinnati with 153 left in the half. John Fl uh, Flowers that time on the rebound. Rod Flowers is very fortunate not to get injured. Came down and had his feet taken out from under him. And Cincinnati fortunate to keep possession. The long lob to Stokes. And they had 32 seconds on the shot clock. Bob Huggins was yelling. <laughs> and the officials are talking about it now at the scorer's table. But before the ball was put in play, 32 on the shot clock. One thing we've noticed since Odarte Blankson went out of the ball game with three fouls, Cincinnati has had much better success on the offensive glass. And that's been a big part of them staying into this in this ball game. Oh, what a pick. 30 seconds on the shot clock. On the lob way, tried to interrupt the play, but Stokes made a nice catch. Ron Barker in the corner. The field with it. Here's that matchup zone that Marquette goes to in time of need. The jump shot too long. Stokes missed it, but right there was Rod Flowers. That's Flowers' first field goal. Once again, they're attacking the offensive glass without Blankson being in there. Blankson out with three fouls. Wade in the middle for Scott Merritt. Merritt from the point coming down to a minute 12 left in the first half and the loose ball and the scramble. Marquette comes away with a terrific job by Namika. Cordell Henry spinning and shooting and he traveled. A turnover Marquette Cincinnati's ball inside a minute left until halftime. Tom Crean will get Travis Diener back in the game. Dean in, Wade goes out. Wade was on the bench a while with two fouls, and Tom Crean doesn't want Wade to pick up another foul inside a minute to go until halftime. So Wade is the leading scorer at 18.2 a game. Also the leading rebounder and assist man. Marquette on defense now. Number 20 is Teron Barker. And a good save for Cincinnati by Williams. Davis from the pivot. Way out high. Leonard Stokes. 10 on the shot clock, 32 on the game clock. Barker sets up for a three. Flowers pushes off and a foul against Cincinnati. Stopping the clock with 27.1 seconds to go. Flowers has one foul. Both teams have been over the 10 foul limit for some time. Two free throws coming up for Scott Merritt. Scott Merritt is 0 for 1 from the line, missing the front end of a 1 and 1 a while ago. 73% from the free throw line so far this season for Merritt. 
Now the shot coming his way with 27.1 seconds left. Maxiel back in for Cincinnati. Flowers out. Scott Merritt out of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. He has two points for scoring one against Tulane Tuesday. 33 29 Marquette. And Cincinnati going for the last shot of the first half. Steve Logan, the leading scorer in the league, has scored only three points in the first half. With the Marquette fans standing, crowd in the area of 18,000 at the Bradley Center. The shot by Stokes. Henry with the rebound. Two seconds. One. The half court shot just misses. The fans applaud the Marquette Golden Eagles as they go off the floor at halftime. They had a 10 point lead early and managed to hold on for a 33 to 29 lead over number four Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is riding a 20 game winning streak. Let's go courtside to Stephen Bardo. OK, coach, you had some foul trouble early on. Blankson was tough on the glass. He went out with three fouls. Wade went out with two fouls. But you were still able to stem the tide. Tell me what you're looking forward to in the second half. Well, we'll have some fresh guys because of all that foul trouble. But it's crucial that we, we were able to hold on as we had to weather the storm a little bit. They're a great team. We're playing hard. They're playing hard. It's going to be a heck of a second half. We've right. got to do a better job rebounding. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you, John. All right, Stephen. Dwayne Wade scored nine. Cordell Henry scored eight. And Marquette leads 33-29 over number four Cincinnati. We'll be back with the American Century Halftime Report from Milwaukee after this. Well, the fans went crazy in the first half when Marquette built a 10.21 to 11 lead and managed to hold on for a 33-29 halftime lead over Cincinnati. Maxiel Davis McElroy the leading scorers for Cincinnati Maxiel on top was seven and Wade scored nine Henry eight and Diener seven but look at the backcourt comparison Cincinnati nine points from the guards three of 13 field goal shooting Marquette 26 points on eight of 15 led by Wade's nine and Henry's eight points yeah, that's, that is excellent domination in the backcourt by Marquette when leading at the half this season, Marquette is perfect, 14 and 0. And on the runner, Marquette scores right out of the gate. Cordell Henry has 11. Cordell taking it personal, this challenge he has with the Player of the Year in Conference USA, Steve Logan. He's taking it to him right now. Logan on the miss. He had only three in the first half. Stokes missed the putback, and there's Scott Merritt for Marquette. Thanks. Cincinnati missed on a close in scoring opportunity and Wade banks it in. He has 13. There's a backcourt we spoke of, John. Coming out quick. This is a full timeout as Bob Huggins wants to talk to his Bearcats and slow down Marquette's fast start. And Marquette's lead is 37-29. About 18,000 on fan, fans on hand here today at the Bradley Center. Marquette leads 37 to 29. This building looks great when it's full, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And a lot of gold in here for Marquette. And they've been entertained by Dwayne Wade, Cordell Henry and company. Wayne with it, Wade with 11 and 10 for Henry, each scoring a field goal in the second half. For the 37 to 29 lead, Marquette enjoys over the number four team in the nation. A little. On the McElroy and on the drive and the dunk, Leonard Stokes first field goal today comes at 19 minutes to go in the second half. That's what Stokes should have dealt with the last one, John. The, the layup that he missed. Corbin powered home. No, no miss that time. Romanomica working on Jamal Davis. Merritt was open for the free throw line. Little stopped him. Little contested shot, but hangs it in anyway. Man. That's a tough move by a guy that lacks confidence, John. That's four points for Merritt. His first field goal to complement a couple of first half free throws. Let's see if Logan can get on track offensively this possession. Logan guarded by Henry. Marquette's man to man. McElroy with the spinner. Woo. The basket and one for Emmanuel McElroy. 
And that's for him, Blankson. Go back here and look at Little kick out around the horn and it's Snokes comes baseline over Merritt. And then here we go with McElroy with a nice spin move on Blanks and takes the contact and gets the shot to go. Digs in for Blanks who leaves with four fouls. Number 23, Daniel McElroy. And missed the free throw. That was a costly foul for Marquette. Blanks and their guy on the glass has to sit now for quite a while. Digs inside, Wade. How oh, about that extension and using the glass? <laughs> There's Mr. Mr. Do it all for Marquette. Inside out, off glass, straight on, whatever you like, he can provide. Logan has scored with three points today. Leonard Stokes for Jamal Davis out high. Logan. And he throws it away. The interior players just didn't anticipate the pass. Just set play. Merrick gives McElroy a pick. Wade comes with the spin. High off the glass. Gets it to go. Marquette working with a 41 to 33 lead. There's Wade inside McElroy. Handing it out and Diggs will get it right back into Wade's hands. And he hits the short shot. Wade oh, is 15. He and, he and Cordell Henry love to get into that paint and elevate for the jump. And a reach in by Merritt going over Little's back. Man. Merritt's second foul. Here we go once again with Wade. Coming hard on two dribbles, elevating in the paint over McElroy, getting the J to go. Boy, this guy's got a, as we see Bob Huggins there in the city, looking rather perplexed about what his team can do to get back in this game. But Wade has a motor that seems to never stop. Marquette contesting the inbounds pass. With 30 on the shot clock, Stokes handles the basketball for the Bearcats. Hey, Marquette in their matchup zone resembles a man, but it's definitely a matchup zone. And after a while, they'll fall back into a man to man out of the matchup. A five second call rewards Marquette's defense. Our timeout was taken. That was very, very close to a five second call. A timeout. 30 second timeout at that. Next week, Conference USA basketball, the Charlotte 49ers against the St. Louis Pelicans. Lorenzo Romar, 1 Eastern time, noon central from ESPN+. Plus. Charlotte, a 7-1 record. The fans want this party started. This party started about 10.30 this morning. Right. They got it here early and got it going. Got this building prepared. For this effort that we're seeing from the Golden Eagles. Tremendous start out of the block here in the second half. When you played, Stephen, did you feel a difference in the intensity when the calendar turned over from January to February? Definitely, because you're that, that much closer to the NCAA tournament, the end of the conference run, and whatever you have to get done, it better get done in February. Stokes on the runner against foul in the act of shooting. Scott Merritt, that's his third foul. Tom Green is not happy with those results. Leonard Stokes going to the free throw line. You see Coach Green over on the sideline talking to his players. Trying to coach and tell him what he wants done rather than what Scott Merritt just did. Stokes misses a free throw. His second miss from the line today. Good that time as it bangs in. Leonard Stokes has four points. Some disagreement at half court there, but they got it worked out. Not quite to the 16 minute mark and the TV timeout, so play resumes with Cordell Henry up the floor for Marquette. Penetrating, finding Merritt, who put the ball on the floor. He is fouled and will go to the line for a three point attempt. Donald Little's third foul. 
set play by Marquette. One up. They bring Henry off of a pick and roll with Merritt. Merritt receives a back pick from another teammate, resulting in him getting open underneath the basket. Nice dish by Cordell Henry. Merritt on the line. I'll tell you what, John, for a guy that struggled, Merritt is having a pretty good ball game this afternoon, and these are the type of games that will definitely boost your confidence. Coming and playing well against the number four team in the country as Little goes to sit down. With Merritt shooting two, he scored five points. This is in play at 16-24. Left in the second half. Imperfect on his second attempt. Give him six points today, and Little's on the bench with three fouls. With the Marquette fans standing in the lower bowl area, the Bradley Center, Davis drives and was intimidated by Namika with the follow, a foul called against Cincinnati. There's <laughs> Johnny on the spot once again. Jason Maxiel comes in with the offensive rebound. Let me correct the foul on Scott Merritt of Cincinnati. His fourth foul. So that's four on Blankson Merritt. Max Eel will shoot two shots, one for two from the free throw line after going three for three from the field in the first half. Cincinnati, nine out of 19 from the free throw line. And that's really tough for Merritt, having to come out of the game with four fouls as Harris comes in for him, but he's done a pretty good job. Made a couple of mistakes early here in the second half, but he's done a good job offensively and giving them the boost that they were looking for. Seal has scored a couple of free throws, three for four from the line today, and nine points overall. But Harris at 6'7, little size going to the bench, 6'10, Scott Merritt with the four fouls. What you give up in height, Harris definitely has a strength and, and veteran savvy to get it done. Namika can't score. You were saying? <laughs> Harris's first field goal for an offensive rebound. Nice follow that time by Harris going with the left hand to avoid the defender. 47-36. Davis to the cutting Stokes. An offensive foul on Leonard Stokes, his second foul. Fifteen thirty-five to go in the second half, and Marquette is on the run. Forty-seven to thirty-six, leading Cincinnati. As you're watching Conference USA basketball from ESPN Plus. A sold out eighteen thousand six hundred ninety-eight fans at the Bradley Center, and Marquette leads Cincinnati in the second half. And time now for a look at the Army of One, brought to you by the United States Army. Going back to Cincinnati's 1960-61. National Championship team, a 27 and 3 record. And this was without Oscar Robertson. The year after Big O, as the number one retired here by the Milwaukee Bucks, Robertson has the most points scored in a single game at 62 against North Texas in 59 and 60. The ball goes the other way as we return to live action in. Milwaukee Wisconsin Marquette 47 to 36 with Cincinnati trying to cut into the lead 15 21 to go in the second half Cincinnati not getting it done only shooting 38 percent from the field a lot of that has to do with Logan struggling Stokes had a good look at the basket it rimmed out to Dwayne Wade watch Henry this is where he's dangerous with the handoff for Wade the stutter step Namika with a nice catch couldn't finish it though and Namika fouled Maxiel. Henry and Wade do such a good job coming down in the flow of the offense, kind of probing, dribble handoff. Logan, 21.8 points a game through the first 21 games, has scored only three today. A field goal, and one for two from the free throw line in the first half. Aluma Namika committed his second foul for. Marquette, that's five team foul. Davis at the point. You see Cincinnati trying to run Logan off some picks. Trying to free him up. Logan for Teron Barker's three attempt. Got it. That's two three pointers for Barker today. You know, he wants to have a big game. He's from Racine, Wisconsin. 
can imagine he has some family in the stands here. 47-39 Marquette. Walker is watching Dwayne Wade, who has 15 today. 3.2 points under the average. Namika setting a pick with 12 on the clock. On the shot clock, Henry misses off the back iron and a foul in the lane. The Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Conference USA Basketball, number four Cincinnati against Marquette. Along with Stephen Bardo, I'm John Rooney. Bill goals this half. Marquette six out of nine. Cincinnati three for six. Wade off the inbounds. Pass was denied the shooting opportunity. And stepped on the line. B.J. Grove in for Cincinnati. See Max Hill not happy coming out of the ball game. He has three fouls. Huggins has got to save him. He's been one of the few players this afternoon that's been able to score effectively. Gets this tough Marquette defense. Wade looking for the inbounds pass and a timeout called by Marquette. 30 second timeout, avoiding a turnover. Good job that time. I saw Green run down the sideline, getting the call just before the turnover. You can follow all 14 Conference USA teams on the league's official website, www.c-usasports.com. The site contains up-to-date notes, statistics, box scores, as well as information on the league's other 18 sports. So, tune into the latest news across Conference USA by pointing your browser to www.c-usasports.com. Conference USA, today's games... They have TCU Memphis, 2 o'clock Eastern time, coming up on many of these stations. Southern Miss and Tulane, St. Louis plays at East Carolina tonight. Charlotte will get together with Houston. And Charlotte has a 7-1 record, just like Marquette coming into our game today. Cincinnati 8-0 with a 20-game winning streak in jeopardy. Under 14 minutes to go in the second half, 47-39 Marquette. And Marquette trying to isolate Wade on a smaller Barker. On the fadeaway, the shot was too strong. Barker was able to protect the ball and now advance it up the floor for the Bearcats. They need some points on this trip. Logan for three. Too strong. Travis Diener is there for Marquette. When you're struggling from the field, John, the last thing you want to do is come and jack a three. You need to get inside and get an easy two to get your confidence up. Wade, he goes one way and then he goes the other way in the blink of an eye. And Mark is all over, but Wade at 6'4, very good ball handler for his side. Harris from the wing. Henry was open. Near steal there by Barker. Pull it past to the baseline, and Wade can't quite get the bank shot, but he'll be on the line. Nice recovery that time by Cordell Henry. Barker shot in, tried to get the double team. As you see here, Wade working the baseline, gets the pass and draws a foul from Davis. First foul on Davis. Wade misses the free throw. One for three from the free throw line. Cincinnati is going to have to find a way. If it's not Logan, it could be Williams or Barker, but they have to find a way to manufacture some points. Dwayne Wade has 16 points in Marquette's 48 to 39 lead. Marquette had a 21 to 11 lead early in our game. That was their biggest. Field Williams and Jamal Davis out front. Steve Logan has been throttled today by Cordell Henry. Only three points. And that's a two, so five points for Logan. That's his first field goal in the second half. Only his second field goal today. And he finally shook loose in, in two-point land. Got the swish. Let's see if he can turn it on here down the second, down the stretch of the second half. We know he's more than capable. Namika denied inside. Davis was that got the ball back though. E.J. Grove also clogging up the middle for Cincinnati. 
Grove is with Harris right now in the man to man. Davis and Namaka. Well, Cordell Henry goes out front to Diener between the circles. I'll tell you what, moving Namaka and Davis are getting after the inside. Here's Henry going left, lost the ball, and there's Barker for the Bearcats. Teron Barker to the front court. Long three for Field Williams short. Diener through the lane all the way to the front court. The lob for Wade. He lays it in. He wanted to go for the slam. <laughs> it was foul. Marquette had some timely fast break points. Time Wade got behind the defense and got the foul. You see here, Diener has his head up, looking ahead. Nice lead pass to Wade. Takes a shot on the arm, but gets the layup to go. Field Williams denied the dunk, but picked up a foul. You see Wade feeling good about the finish. Diener heads up play coming up the floor with his head up. Sanders in, Namaka out for Marquette. A three-point play for Wade. He is at 19 points. Dwayne Wade, sophomore from Oakland, Illinois, Richards High School, will lob the basket. They went to the line and completed a three-point play at Marquette's 10-point advantage. ESPN Plus's coverage from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Marquette Golden Eagles, 18-3, 7-1 in Conference USA against Cincinnati, number four in the nation, 20-1, 8-0 in Conference USA. Let's take a look at Shooting the Rock, brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. Three-point field goal, Cincinnati, three out of 11. Marquette, one for five, and that one belongs to Travis Peter. Yeah. But Marquette has been smart about taking their shots. They, they haven't jacked up as many as Cincinnati has, and you look at Huggins, he's trying to figure out what he can do to get his ball flip back in the game. With 18,698 at the Bradley Center, that's a sellout, an all-time Marquette record set today. The previous high was 18,563 against Cincinnati, February 25th, 1993. Logan, that's for two, and Logan has seven now. Well under his 21.8 a game, leading Conference USA. And Logan took a forearm shiver before he got that jumper off from John Harris. Don't all the big scorers earn every point? That's it. Drawing the best defenders and a lot of physical contact before getting open for the shots. Now Cincinnati in a 1-3-1 zone with Logan right there in the middle has thrown Marquette here. They've got to hurry and get a shot off. Then double teaming the ball when it's picked up. Five on the shot clock. Diggs. And it's a turnover. Did somebody hit the end line? Yeah, it looked like... Uh, that's eight turnovers. It looked like Terry Sanders was going baseline and stepped out of bounds. Nice defensive adjustment that time by Cincinnati. Bob Huggins, National Coach of the Year, 1998 Basketball Times and 2000 by Sporting News. From the field, Cincinnati, 40% Marquette, 50% today. You see them? Trying to run Logan off a couple screens there, trying to free him up. He's got to go off the dribble with Henry. He's not going to catch and shoot. And there's the fadeaway. Too strong. The volley. Who's going to win this one? A timeout call, or an attempt for it anyway, by John Harris. And he didn't get it done. He was out of bounds. Cincinnati's ball. I wish they'd do away with that rule period where they could be out of hanging in the air and call a timeout. I agree, Jay. Make it easier on the officials. And the announcers could be selfish about it. <laughs> McElroy for Cincinnati. Logan steps up for three. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Ten uh -oh. points for Logan. That's his first tray today. No, that was a good call. That was overruled. The official standing behind Logan indicated a three, and it was overruled to a two-point basket. As another official saw him on the line, so nine for Logan. That was a good call, and we'll see a replay of that later, but it shows that his toe was definitely on the three-point line. Coming down to ten minutes left in the second half. Diener for three. Count it. Woo. Diener made sure that time. A good foot and a half off the three. Stokes didn't get out quick enough, but Travis made him pay. 
54-45 Marquette. Tell you what, Marquette has thrown some counter punches this afternoon. Logan over the backboard to the Marquette Golden Eagles. Let's take a look at Logan's last shot. See here, he gets the screen. Now, now watch him up fake Diener. Now watch him step in, John. See his toes? It looked like they crossed the line as that shot came up uh, his legs just a little bit. The one official saw him on the line and overruled the official who had called the three behind him. Open three look by Henry. Oh, man. Cordell Henry with 13 points. The biggest lead for Marquette at 57 45. Lots of contact low and a blocking foul call. Let's take a look at Henry again, Stephen. Nice kick out by Harris that time to an open Henry. Almost reminiscent of the play before when Travis Dieter hit a three. They get penetration inside. Marquette does. Kick out to an open three-point shooter. And they nail. Henry committed his second foul. 16 fouls for Marquette. Five for Cincinnati in the second half. Field Williams in for Cincinnati. Logan to inbound. Maxia. Put a hand to Logan. Little has been quiet offensively. Still quiet. Wayne Wade. Oh, man. He looks at the basket, didn't have the shot, brought it back out front to Cordell Henry. Lob for Wade, and he's fouled, going for the over the head two hand slam. And that was reminiscent of a play he did against DePaul. You see here, they make eye contact. There's no hand signal, just eye contact. He goes up, tries to hammer it home, going backwards over the top of his head. You see Henry knows what he wants to do the whole time. Throws a lob, doesn't get it to go, but draws a foul. Leonard Stokes said, you're not jamming that one. The third foul on Stokes. No good. As Wade has one more attempt at his point today. One more from the line here at 8.38 to go in the second half. Three for six from the free throw line. Dwayne Wade. 20 points. Well, Darte Blankson re-enters the game with four fouls for Marquette. Henry will get a breather on the Marquette bench. And the crowd is back into the game. The steal by Wade on the careless pass. Wade is fouled. Stokes reaching in. Oh, I'll tell you what. Marquette is smelling blood. They're going after Cincinnati right now. Not giving an inch defensively. The fourth foul on Leonard Stokes. The seventh team foul for the Bearcats. Wade to the line with two more free throws. Steven, you were talking about the DePaul game in Chicago. 35 points, 13 of 18 for the field, 8 for 10 for the free throw line, 9 points, 3 assists, 3 block shots, and a steal. And Stokes goes over to the Cincinnati bench. Wade with another one. 21, 22 points total for Dwayne Wade. And let's see what how Cincinnati responds to this crowd being on their feet. Logan in heavy traffic to an open Donald Little. That's Whoa. his first field goal. And Little had only one rebound in the first half. First few trips down the floor. Did a nice job standing tall in the middle defensively for Cincinnati. But we haven't heard much from him today. Won a few times. Logan was able to create. Make something happen for his teammate. Inside eight minutes to go, second half, Travis Diener, freshman from Fond du Lac. Amico with the pick. Wade out to Blankson. That's a three attempt. And a rebound for Emmanuel McElroy. Logan for three. He's just not on his shots today, and the ball slapped out of bounds. It's Cincinnati's ball. We'll take a timeout. 
and the sold out Bradley Center. Donald Little is trying to help Cincinnati back into the game. Scored the last time down the floor. As we take this time out, we remind you, you're watching Conference USA Basketball from ESPN+. Plus. The number four Cincinnati Bearcats. They have won 20 in a row. Getting out to an 8-0 record in the American Division of Conference USA. But right behind, they see Marquette and Charlotte at 7-1. A Marquette win today pulls the Golden Eagles even with Cincinnati and gives Marquette an eight-game winning streak, breaking the Bearcats' 20-game winning streak. But look over in the National Division. Memphis, 8-0. And a drop-off to Houston, South Florida. South Florida lost to Louisville to go 4-4. Four and four. And Tom Cream, 48-31 in three years as head coach of the Golden Eagles after 10 years as an assistant. And off the fast break, Marquette has been able to score 10 more points than Cincinnati today, leading 60-47. to 47. Biggest lead for Marquette. From the corner, Logan. And he stroked that one. Boy, how'd they leave him open in the, in the matchup zone that time? They have to know where Steve Logan is at all times. The 11 points for Logan after scoring that two-pointer. Out front, Henry watched by Logan. Under seven minutes left in the game. That Cincinnati defense is starting to turn up, John. Some of the drives by Henry is starting to get cut off a little bit. Your three-point shots, and a team can be right back in the game. Seven on the shot clock. Namika was fouled, and that's big. With time running down, really hurt Cincinnati with Max Eels foul. It's his fourth foul. Let's look at Logan working against the matchup zone of Marquette. Kind of sneaks along the baseline. They lost track of him, and he drains the jump. Aloma Namika from Sweden, majoring in international affairs at Marquette, on the line. <laughs> He'll be shooting for his fourth point. Today, Marquette is 20 out of 24 from the free throw line. Cincinnati has been to the line for 20 attempts, making only 10. Can't get it done on a, in a, someone else's building. That's as tough as Marquette. You have to take advantage of that. I see Jason Maxiel going to the bench for four fouls. That's really going to hurt Cincinnati. Namaka with a miss. A 68% shooter, only one for two that time. Six and a half minutes left in the game. Davis has uh, scored earlier. Has been quiet here in the last five to six minutes. Logan from the baseline. There's another one. 13 for Logan. Ten of those in the second half. <laughs> Logan trying to let everybody from Marquette know it's a 40-minute ball game. We're not done yet, folks. A 10-point lead. In Cincinnati erased a 10-point lead in the first half. Up to Henry it goes. And Henry has that one funnel in, giving him 15 today. We need to check and see if it's Cordell Henry's birthday, because that one didn't look like it had a chance and still got it to go. The ball just floats up there. Not a lot of rotation. Steven and finds the nets. Logan short this time. Wade is all alone. As Merritt and Little are mixing it up in the lane. That left Wade all by his lonesome. Nice catch by Wade, hounded by McElroy. Wade to the baseline. Henry was open for a second, shoots for two. Rebound by Little inside with Merritt on his back and just threw the ball away. Bad outlet that time by Little. Can't afford these mistakes with a little bit more than five minutes left. With that lapse, that could be with the matchup with Scott and Merritt and how they've been going at each other. But you can't make an outlet pass no. underhand. That, that just doesn't get it done. Got to be more sound than that at, at all times of the ball game, particularly, particularly now. 63-51 Marquette. And a spill away from the ball. The foul on Donald Little. The ninth team foul. For Little, his fourth foul. Donald Little has been frustrated all afternoon in that time. Just wanted to run over Henry, which he did. But you can't lose your cool with five minutes left and you're trying to come from behind. 
Henry with 15 points, two for two from the free throw line. Three for three. The shots in play, 5.02 to go in the second half. And Marquette sensing an upset. 64-51. Lisa Maxiel back in. 6-7 freshman from Carrollton, Texas. When you look at what Cincinnati has to do here in the last five minutes, John, they're up against one of the better teams, I think, in the country at playing with the lead by the way that they play. Marquette takes their time. Every offensive possession, they get a good look, but they defend as well as anybody in the country. Marquette, 14-0, when leading at the halftime, led at the half today. Oh, Stephen Logan has 15 points. Cincinnati. Cincinnati takes a timeout, stopping the clock with 4.47 left in the second half. And it's a 30-second timeout. Let's take a look at some of Steve Logan's action from the second half. Here. Now, does it look like he could switch places with Henry right here with the crossover, gets inside the defense and the nice floating jumper? Logan's starting to pick it up. It may be a little bit, little too late. But he's, he's trying to give his team the offensive production that they've lacked all afternoon. Marquette led 33-29 at halftime after enjoying a 21-11 lead, 10 points earlier in the first half. Logan has scored 12 of Cincinnati's last 14 points. And, Steven, he has to look for the shot every time he touches the ball, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And, and if he doesn't get it done, who, who will? One for four in the first half, and now he's taking his shots. 11 attempts, six have gone in in the second half, scoring 12 of his points in the second 20 minutes. Namaka inbounding to Travis Dean. Cincinnati's full court pressure. Marquette has seen a lot of pressure from St. Louis and Tulane the last couple of games. Certainly helping them prepare for a Cincinnati's pressure. Not the best in the conference. And the fact that they have two point guards in the game really helps against the pressure as well in Cordell Henry and Travis Dean. Logan watching Henry. Nine on the shot clock. There's Diener letting it fly. The volley, Namak is there from Marquette. Well, that just kills you when you play tough defense. Eat that much time up off the clock, play tough defense, and then lose the offensive rebound to Marquette. And Aluma Namaka with a bloody mouth still goes in and gets the offensive rebound. Marquette really has some tough front court players. May not be tall, may not look grizzled, but boy, they are tough. Adina just throws it up there. Merritt's there and scores. Boy, Fortuna's Look bounce. what I found. That's right. Fortuna's bounce from Merritt. 66 to 53. Logan looking to create some offense. The time running down on Cincinnati. There's the roll for Leonard Stokes. He has six. Nice recognition of the mismatch. Travis Dieter trying to guard the 6-6 six -six Stokes on the block. Here's Henry for Marquette. Stopping, popping, and it won't go. Max Hill there for Cincinnati. Three minutes left in the game. Stokes all the way in. Oh, it rolls out for him. Scott Merritt. On the rebound for the Marquette Golden Eagles, who lead 66 to 55. Well, Stokes has had a couple of goals this afternoon that just have hit every part of the rim and couldn't drop. You saw Marquette outscoring Cincinnati points in the lane today. 14 on the shot clock. 10 on the shot clock. Diener. The five on the shot clock. Cordell Henry, a long three. Got it! Oh, man. <laughs> and, and, and Henry's feeling it. It is this kind of day for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Time running down on the shot clock. A long three, all bottoms for Cordell Henry, who has 19.
Marquette is leading going away from Cincinnati. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Sun shining outside and uh, shining brightly inside for the Marquette fans. As we take a look at the American Century on the money player of the game, number three, Dwayne Wade. 22 points, 8 of 11 from the field, 7 rebounds today. And Cordell Henry's 19 points have complimented Dwayne Wade, our American Century on the money player of the game. Cincinnati's 20 game win streak on the line. One of two undefeated teams in Conference USA coming in, Memphis the other. McElroy was open, he'll step up. Man, he scores it and goes to the line. He'll have a chance to score a point with the clock stop at 2.08 to play. Looks like Emmanuel McElroy was going to settle for the jumper here. Gets the kick out from Logan out of the double team. He, he thinks about it, goes all to the hole. Draws the contact from Namaka and gets the roll. That's a perfect scenario for Cincinnati, having the opportunity to make a three point play and have the, the clock stop on the foul. McElroy shooting for the three-point play, and you can count it. Boy, those are the plays that drive coaches crazy, John. <laughs> you want to play great defense and sticks. have good position, but that time McElroy drew the foul. Diener accepting the inbounds pass with Stokes trailing it. Cordell Henry streaking to the front court. And a bump by McElroy. That's his third foul. You don't want to foul Henry. Cordell Henry shoots 79% from the line. Ten team fouls on Cincinnati. Cordell Henry will be shooting for his 20th point. Both coaches trying to shuffle their lineups a little bit. Cincinnati trying to get some early offensive opportunities and then press real well and then as you see Henry hit the first free throw. And Barrett comes out of the game and Harris comes back in. A solid veteran front court player for Marquette. And the rebound by Wade. 24 for Wade. Here's Logan. That's short and there's Wade. Lane away to the front court for Marquette. Surveys the floor and finds Travis Diener. The Marquette spreading the floor. And as good a defender as Stokes is, it's awfully hard to keep Travis Diener in front of him. Handles the ball, as you can see, extremely well. Finally, the clock has stopped at 128 left in the game with a reach in foul. You see the free throw, and it looks as though Cincinnati has a defensive rebound. And here comes Wade. Gets inside of Jason Maxiel, steals the ball with the putback. Two shots for Travis Diener. And I tell you, it's been that kind of afternoon for Dwayne Wade. Diener, four out of five from the line, 10 points. Make that 11. 72-58, now 73-58 Marquette. 122 in count. Davis from the point. Stokes wins the volley. Logan. Nice position inside for Davis, and he's fouled. Illuminamica with his fourth foul. Illuminamica's picked up his second foul like that, where he thought he had good position, got his hands up. Davis drew the foul. For those of you expecting TCU in Memphis, it will be coming along. As this game has gone to the 112 mark of the second half, Marquette leading 73 59 over the number four team in the country, Cincinnati. Along with Stephen Bardo, I'm John Rooney at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Davis has cut the game to 73 60. A little trouble for Marquette inbounding. And there's Wade. He is so quick. And Wade is fouled by Rodney Crawford. Two shots coming up for Dwayne Wade. And as this game winds down, the trend continues for Marquette against Cincinnati here in New Orleans. Last year, Marquette won 47 to 44. And Marquette has won four of the last six here against Cincinnati coming into our game today. 
The last season, Marquette won over at Cincinnati in overtime, 66 to 63. And this by Wade. Wade has 24 points. Came in averaging 18.2 a game. Look at here, Wade. Tremendous ball game with 25 points and eight rebounds. Coming down to one minute left. And the interception by Wade. Harris to Wade. He'll bring it back out. Under a minute to go in Milwaukee. And the fans are ready to celebrate. 18,000 plus. 18,698 the count today. A record crowd for Marquette. Wade. Too strong off the glass. Namika crashes the board and saved by Henry. Under a half minute to go. As Marquette is trying to win for the fifth time in the last seven games here against Cincinnati. Boy, I mean, they dominated the Bearcats this afternoon. And Cincinnati is going to let Marquette run out the clock. Marquette has ended Cincinnati's 20-game winning streak. And the Marquette Golden Eagles go to 8-1 and one in the league, 19-3 and three overall. Stephen, the students couldn't wait to do that. Yeah, they've been waiting, as you said, John, since 10.30 this morning to storm the floor in a huge upset over the Bearcats. What a tremendous feeling for these guys from Marquette. They really put, laid it on the line this afternoon, started out strong, and really took the best defensive team in the country, really put it to them and shot the ball extremely well from the field. Marquette led 33 to 29 at the half and with very good defense scoring points off the break and in the lane 174 to 60 over the number four team in the country holding Cincinnati to 40.7 percent from the field today Wayne Wade scored 25 Cordell Henry scored 20. Steve Logan at 15 points, but that's under his 21.8 points a game. And there's our final. Marquette upset Cincinnati 74 to 60. Now for Stephen Bardo and our entire ESPN Plus crew, I'm John Rooney. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.